what is going on guys welcome back to another swift video in today's video we're going to learn how you can use a web view in your swift ui app so a little bit of background there's no web view component built into swift ui 2 as of december 2020 but web views are so essential in most apps in terms of showing pages showing sign-in screens and all that good stuff so we definitely need to be able to use them and in this video you'll learn how to do that so Make sure you absolutely destroy that like button as per usual, helps out with video engagement, the algorithm, all that good stuff. Subscribe while you're at it if you're a you know, returning viewer. I think something like 70% of you watch consistently but have not hit that subscribe button. That said, let's open up Xcode, get excited, and let's talk about some web views in SwiftUI. All right, we're gonna get started by opening up Xcode and creating a new project. We're gonna stick with the app template and I'm gonna go ahead and call this web view in swift ui of course let's change the interface to be swift ui let's also change the life cycle to be a swift ui app and uh, your language of course has to be swift go ahead and continue and let's throw this on our desktop that works for now and once xcode decides to stop being slow we will jump into our content view and get straight away into it all right so there we are Let's uh, select the simulator that I've got open here, which is the 12 Pro Max. I'm gonna hit the run button so it's nice and ready for us. We're also not gonna be using the preview canvas here. So go ahead and just drag that out to close it on up. And we don't need that uh, attributes inspector either. And let me just bump up the font size so everyone can see this nice and large. All right, so there is our empty app running. All right, how do we create a web view? So, Right now, there is no WebView-esque component in SwiftUI 2.0 as of December 2020. However, you can really simply bring in uh, a custom uh, view in which you can wrap a WebKit view via UI view representable. So it's very, very simple. It's quite a few lines of code, uh, like actually a few lines of code, not actually quite a few. So let's go ahead and create a new Swift file. And I'm just gonna go ahead and call this WebView. Go ahead and create it just like that. And the two things you wanna start by importing in here are Swift UI and WebKit. So what is UI view representable? It's basically how you create a custom uh, representation of a UI view, uh, any type of UI view that you can use in Swift UI. So what you need to start by doing is creating a struct. So we're gonna create a web view. We can actually go ahead and just call this like Swift UI web view to be a little more specific. And we're gonna have it conform to UI view representable, this first protocol right here. And the first thing you'll notice is you get an error here because there's some protocol requirements that are not satisfied. So go ahead and uh, do that and you'll see that it is satisfied just like that. So let's uh, go ahead and uh, ignore this for just a moment actually. We need to bring in two functions in here. And the first one is uh, make UI view. And this basically gets called by uh, the actual protocol to go ahead and create the underlying UI view that you want to wrap. And in this case, we're going to be returning a WK web view, uh, otherwise known as a WebKit web view. And we also want to go ahead and bring in another function called update UI view. And in this case, once again, uh, at this time, the autocomplete pulls in WK web view because we have it supplied here, so we can infer it. In this uh, function here, we can actually go ahead and uh, load in a URL for the web view. So finally, we want to actually bring in a URL here. So I'm gonna go ahead and say, uh, let URL is a URL. We're gonna make it optional since URL constructors are optional. And in this function, what we can go ahead and do is say let card let URL, let's go ahead and actually call it a my URL so the naming doesn't conflict. We can say this is URL, just like that. Otherwise, uh, if it's nil, we'll return. We're going to create a request thereafter. It's going to be a URL request, and we're going to pass in the URL that we just unwrapped right above it. And then finally, this UI view, because it's a web view, we can say UI view load, which is uh, the normal way of using a web view. We can load that request. And then this function is fairly important. We need to return an instance of a WK web view. So in here, you can actually create your web view. So here we would say let 
web view. This would be WK web view. And you can just return it, uh, you know, the standard way, or you can actually put in a configuration and return it. We'll make the frame zero since this part is a little irrelevant in SwiftUI. And here I'm gonna pass in a config. And right above this, what we're gonna go ahead and do is we're gonna create that config. So we'll say the config is WK web view configuration. Might just be WK configuration. Let's see. Here we go, WK web view configuration. Go ahead and create that. And the main reason most of you are gonna probably want to create this is to enable JavaScript. Uh, so your pages, of course, can load JavaScript, the websites that you load. And we're gonna pass in preferences in this guy and just enable JavaScript. So we're gonna say drop JavaScript uh, enabled. So looks like this is crossed out because it's deprecated perhaps. This I believe needs to be a var so we can mutate it. Let's see if we get an error. Let's see what this is complaining about. All right, so it's saying in iOS 14, we need to change this to be uh, the page preferences instead. So let's see, let's try to go ahead and create that instead. So here we're gonna create WK web view page preferences. And hopefully that has a constructor just like that. And then here we can say allows uh, content JavaScript. And that's also a bool, so go ahead and assign that to true. So what you kind of just saw me do there is if you get warnings of things are deprecated or changed between different versions, don't hesitate to just update. That's just a part of building things, um, you know, as we put stuff together. So looks like this is complaining here that it's complaining. So let's see, there should be a page preferences in here. So it looks like we can use this one and assign our preferences that way. Let's see what other errors we get. Um, here it's complaining that preferences was never mutated, so we can make this a constant. And finally, we can go ahead and return this web view to the function. Let me just hit control I to fix up this indentation. And I believe that's all we need to do. All of our errors should go away. So in summary here, we have this struct because views in SwiftUI are just uh, value type structs. We are required to pass in a URL in the constructor. It's UIV representable. We create a WebKit view and re we return it. And in the update view, we go ahead and take that URL and try to load it. So let's go back to our content view and let's get rid of my pop-ups. Let's go back to our content view and let's uh, try to go ahead and actually show this web view. So, I'm gonna go ahead and create a, let's create a navigation view actually. So let's do navigation view, just like that. And here I'm gonna say, what did I call it? Swift UI web view with a URL. This is gonna be URL with a string. And let's see, we're gonna add a navigation title to this guy, just so we can show something at the top there. So we're gonna say web view and the URL will load is uh, apple.com since we are writing out Swift UI code after all. So go ahead and do Swift UI, sorry, instead of Swift UI, go ahead and do uh, apple.com and uh, pick a simulator. We got the 12 Pro Max here and let's go ahead and run it and let's see what we get. So we should see a web view load up here and we should see it load the website. So we get the web view here. And if you look at that, we get apple.com right below it. So that's all there is to set up a web view in your Swift UI code. So let's back up a little bit. Why would you want to set up a web view in Swift UI? Well, oftentimes uh, it's used to show things like terms of service. It's also used to show things like privacy policies. But I think more importantly, what it's really used to do a lot in uh, a lot of apps is signing into different services. So if you wanna integrate things like sign in with Facebook or uh, you know, continue with Google, things like that, those require a web view to be shown. And it's important that you, know, you have a web view available to you when building a Swift UI app. So just to review what we actually did to get this working, like I said, it's very few lines of code here. So we create a struct, call it what you want. And inside of it, the two functions you really need only are the uh, make view and update. Make view is just create whatever view you need and return it. Now, by default, you saw this actually uh, gave us some view. 
And the reason it gives you that by default when you uh, stub out this function with autocomplete is because this protocol is generic and it allows you to basically create this function for whatever type of view you need. So we created it as a WK web view. And actually, let's actually dig into this protocol a little bit. Hopefully it decides to load and not be super slow. This protocol internally is actually built specifically by Apple to solve this kind of issue where they knew, you know, SwiftUI is a new framework and as it evolves, uh, people will start adding different views to it. But before then, we should be able to use our UI kit views. So the view type here is an associated value and this is what uh, you basically use to go ahead and create these functions. So if you look at make UI view, it's actually returning the UI view type so this function is able to be generic in a way where you can use it to create any other type of UI view also. So here's that update view method. And you'll notice that there's a couple other things on here too. There's a dismantle UI view. You can read through the docs uh, you know, afterwards. There's a coordinator uh, property in there. And then there's also a make coordinator and a context. So you can definitely uh, you know, advancedly go and customize this even more. Uh, to meet your needs, but there you have it. That's how you put together a web view in Swift UI. So thanks, you, thanks so much for watching. If you haven't destroyed the like button already, make sure to do so. It helps out with the YouTube algorithm, helps me make more videos for all of you. Leave a comment down below. Do you guys use Swift UI? Do you want to see more Swift UI content? Do you think it's too uh, early for Swift UI still? And as always, hit subscribe for new videos and that notification bell to get a notification every time I post. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you guys in the next one.